Hey fish fam, it's Nikachu, Merfolk Master, and we're gonna play some modern Merfolk today because uh, I need to get prepared for NRG series Minneapolis, which is gonna feature modern and legacy. So what are we gonna be playing in modern? Well, of course we're gonna be playing Merfolk, but what version? I'm gonna still play test mono blue. Uh, I know a lot of the Merfolk community is leaning very hard into the green route for not only C-Note Scope, but also pick your poison. Uh, I've played a good chunk and also watched a lot of the Simic gameplay and between uh, f subtlety and force of negation being a complete non-bow with the green cards. If you draw too many like C-Note Scouts or pick your poisons, these cards are worse. And the fact that the mana base does kill you a good chunk of the time. I would like to still try to lean on mono blue. Even before uh, the, the Leyline Scion decks had been starting to take over the metagame, I am a huge fan of having Subtlety and force of, force of Negation in the main deck because both these cards deal with basically the entire metagame. And as we, both, as we all know, uh, Merfolk is a pretty clunky deck and the fact that we have access to basically six Force of Wills, Subtlety being a very, very good one versus creature decks, I, I think is the hidden secret to, to winning with Merfolk, at least for me. Now, a big difference between uh, lists before Violent Outbursts ban uh, versus afterwards, I'm going to be a little less reliant on Rishnan Dockhand. I'm going to go one down one Dockhand because I don't think it's as necessary to have as many one drops on turn one as possible to enable my Hex Catcher. Uh, with, like, Living End is dead, um, and also Crashing Footfalls is now a very small portion of the metagame, and I'm gonna up the number of Svelun in my deck to give myself a little bit more beef versus the, uh, versus the Zoo decks, but also being a pretty, pretty good mitigator versus any time that I'm gonna be playing, uh, Force of Negation or Subtlety, and I, I think Svelun is pr plenty good versus, uh, uh, Amulet, Tron, any combo deck, or any deck I have to aggressively use, Subtlety or Force Negation. Uh, sideboard, I'm still going to be on four Stern Scolding to hopefully help me versus um, Yogmoth, but also I think this is quite useful versus the, uh, what's it called, um, the Goro's Vengeance uh, Esper Reanimator deck because you can hit all of the pitch elementals, uh, both Solitude and Grief with it. And also, uh, the new inclusion to this deck uh, would be Aether Gust. Aether Gust being a 2-mana choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Uh, I think this is going to be perfectly fine versus the, uh, versus the Scion decks. You can put the Ley Line back on top of their deck, or if it goes back onto the bottom one way or another. Uh, interacts very favor relatively favorably versus Yogmoth Amulet has a lot of matchups, so uh, I think it's plenty good. And you can bring in versus like Murktide, so I mean, it's a pretty versatile card that you can bring in. And with that, let's go play some leagues. We won the die roll. We have a one lander. Got a mulligan. It uh, is not a one lander. How shall I proceed? Uh, I'm, especially on the play, I'm not a fan of Force and Negation after I'm already down a card. Uh, so I guess I'm just going to pitch the Force and Negation. We'll go turn one, Dock Hand, turn two, play Trickster, play Mutaval, Lord. Uh, hopefully this is the right matchup. Because, it, like, let's say I get rid of, I mean, I have the option, I guess, get rid of a Mutaval, but then I, what am I doing? Holding on to the Dock Hand to pitch to Force and Negation? I think it's just easier. We forego the Force and Negation, hope that being on the play is going to be aggro enough to defeat our opponents. So we'll start off with Dockhand because I don't need to show my opponent that I have a Cavern of Souls yet. I don't need to show them that. They don't need to know. Force Negation would be a little bit more keepable if this was a um, an island. Well, this is bad news. All right, we're up against crabs. So we're, we're up against Mill. The hand is turning out all right, though. So uh, I'm going to attack for one. We might not even attack on the following turn. And then upkeep, I will just trickster the crab. So we bought him the force negation. I could use the force negation. Mill is, in general, a good matchup. Although I have to say I've been struggling versus this deck here and there. It's like, it's a matchup you have to respect now. Uh, the crabs just tear us up because we don't have that much removal for them. Or they, they want to save their lands in their hand, but at the same time, they want to curve out. At the same time, they want to curve out. That's right. Oh, look at that. They saved me six, six cards. Okay, here's the Swamp. Uh, 
Okay, Fatal Push resolves. Oh, Dismember was a great top deck. That was fantastic. Um, so we'll just play Lord Attack for two. And we're in a pretty good position. Uh, I'm going to Dismember now. Um, I don't need to get Drown in the Locked or something. There's a lot of different variations of Mill out there. Uh, with different configurations. Okay, Visions of Beyond. I have to really play around Extinction Event. That's super popular. I don't know if it's popular in the main deck, though. Let me take a quick look, see at what's going on here in the mill. The mill meta. Okay, here's a Drown in the Lock. Uh, yeah, okay, Lord, Lord Down. So I'm sort of hoping to draw a land so I can play Lord and attack with Mutavault. Maybe I even want another Mutavault. Ooh, a Hex Catcher. That's even better. Uh... To attack for one or not. Because um, I could play the Hex Catcher, but I think I would rather flash in the Hex Catcher. Alternatively, I could play just Master of the Pearl Dragon and attack for two. That's not bad. And then hold up Hex Catcher for later. But the problem, uh, I, if I want to hit a spell, I'd probably like to hit it earlier. Okay, hold on. Are they playing Extinction Event in the main deck? Not that I see. Not talking about my opponent specifically. I'm just looking at some random mill decks. <sighs> Benefits of playing Lord first. Uh, I get in. I definitely get in that two damage, and then um, no matter what I draw, uh, when I play Hexcatcher, I push more damage after that because the the mass of the Pearl Trident is a little bit bigger. Playing Hexcatcher first will slow my opponent down a little bit. Okay, let's just play the Lord. Um, I can afford quite a few spells to resolve. But if there's something that I want to stick, like if my opponent has more drone in the lock removal, I would rather uh, this got killed, this lives. Hex catcher is going to be my my protection, my baby. Oh no, field of ruin, how rude. Uh, interestingly enough, I can now get hex catcher in play though. I will have an island. Interesting. Some of these decks are playing with that split second card. Um, what's it called? Um, so I think I'm going to try to play my Hex Catcher here, even though it is counterable. Uh, not that I can play around it anyway. I mean, I could wait till my turn to play Hex Catcher. But I think I'll still do this anyway. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, we're going to lose 13 cards. And the race is on. We're at 18. Ooh, that was a bombshell. Now, it's going to help them a little bit, but it's at least going to protect my creatures. And Svaloon is a decent clock. So this gets active at... Um, Shell Duck Isle gets active uh, if a library has 20, or a library has 20 or fewer cards. Okay, we're not there yet. So we're going we're gonna to get 14 cards milled. 20 or fewer, huh? So what if I attack you for four first? Well, you can't activate this. No, you can activate it next turn. So that would require two... Subtlety actually helps us if they ever play something like Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Problem is, if I attack with Svelun, they can play this. But if I draw my card naturally next turn, then I'm, I, I lose anyway. Uh, I'm just thinking, do I attack for 8 now? And then if they draw any removal spell, it doesn't matter. But if I attack for 4, for example, they kill, I don't know, Richard Dockhand. Does that even matter? Attack for 4, you go to 6... Um, I think it's weird. I'm going to just take a safe approach here. Like, I don't need the extra card. I really don't want the Shell Dock Isle to play Tasha's Hideous Laughter or something. And then I'm 
like how, can I even pay for it? How many like subtleties do I have? One. Okay, there's one subtlety left in the deck because one of them's in my hand. Like this helps protect me versus Tasha's hideous laughter by a pretty huge margin. Okay, so now they're down to five. Now if they kill Master of the Pearl Trident, well, I guess they're still alive because this Faelun and uh, Dock End would only be attacking for a little bit. Uh, okay, we're going to float a Colorless. So we have the option to put a Subtlety in play. Uh, um, ooh, do I want to put a Subtlety in play? Hmm. Maybe I don't. Do you know what? I'm done. I don't need any more lands. <laughs> I thought about it. I don't need it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a decision at my upkeep. Uh, I have the option to like tap down the shell dock aisle, uh, and then just try to attack for six, which would be lethal. I think I'm gonna do that. I don't know what the hell. Like either I'm winning or I'm not. Okay, what is this gonna be? Okay, I win. They had nothing. They had nothing. Okay, counter spells. Counter spells are good. Um, stern scolding. Actually, you know, I do like stern scolding. Uh, so long. I actually find that stern scolding and chalice of the void are a non-bow, but I like. I think stern scolding by itself is fine because the crabs are what really going to beat you in this in this matchup. Of course, we want counter spells, and we also want dismembers. The crabs. So many crabs. Subtlety is not bad. Just to counter Tasha's hideous laughter. Um, what cards are not that good? I like Curve. Trickster is not fantastic. Maybe I don't need that many Stern Scoldings. I have, maybe I'm not going to have any. Deshaun's Tidebinder is clunky, but okay. Maybe we'll just get rid of the Stern. I'm on the draw, so maybe we'll just get rid of Stern Scolding. I'll, I'll just have 63 cards in my deck, which is which is fine versus Mill. Uh, it doesn't come up super often, but I have one with like one to two cards in my deck because I, I uh, had like 64 cards. In fact, let's go up one. Okay, we have a stern. Uh, it's just stern scolding on the draw seems w sort of weak, and I'd rather just have dismember. Okay, we'll have one trickster. We'll submit this deck. Fine with three subtlety. I don't need that many. I just sort of need them in my deck. If I can subtlety a crab on turn one, maybe it's not that bad. be honest, I don't feel very strongly about subtlety. I mean, there's some other benefits. I, there's all, There are benefits to having three drops in the deck, by the way, because of... I um, oh, will keep... Oh, do we keep this hand? Double Muta Vault. This hand could backfire badly. It does have Spaloon. Uh, I'll keep it. Uh, but it could, ba it could backfire pretty badly. I need to drop top deck. Um... A one drop, I guess. Uh, that is beautiful. Couldn't ask for more. Especially against the crab that only has two toughness. I can start attacking with Mutavolt immediately. So, um, where was I going here? Oh yeah, the th uh, having three drops in the deck are pretty good because if they play a card like, uh, what's it called? Um, Extinction event, which is relatively common in a lot of mill decks, then they can only choose odd or even, and then if they choose even, then you get to keep all your odds. So you don't want to be too heavy on, and also like the tide binder hits the crab, so I think that's also very useful. Looks like they're prepared to kill my muta vault, but if they do, they do. If you die, you die. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, what was the Muta Vault in Shade? Alternatively, you could play the other Muta Vault first, but I just want to set myself to, pl to play Svelun next turn. It's like, uh, you could play the other Muta Vault hoping that they kill this Muta Vault, and then you can prepare to attack with the next Muta Vault next turn. But if they don't kill this Muta Vault, then I'd be like, well, that's a bit sad. Also, so there's the other upside that if I draw an island, that would really help me here. 
uh, to help curve out my two drops. Because at the moment, I'm only going to play one two drop a turn through Ether Vial. Another Svaloon. Even, Svaloon, even though Svaloon draws me cards, uh, is above and beyond worth it in this matchup. Above and beyond. Okay, what's going on here? I have 13 cards. You always got to wait. Make sure you are below 30, 20 cards. That is um, ideal. So that the uh, Visions of Beyond doesn't get too much value. If the Lord dies, I'll just let it die. That's okay. We have more. There's more where that came from. And uh, I'm going to just try to exhaust all my two drops before I decide to uh, tick my vial up to three. Ooh, that was convenient. Um, don't even attack here. Uh, I think I can just play the hex catcher here. The only thing that punishes me is like mystical dispute, but I don't think they even play that. And now I can protect my hex catcher. I I would defend the hex catcher. It's a lord. It's disruption. It's a good card. Uh, we're at seventeen. Sort of ugly. It's okay. Now do I want to tick the vial up here so that I can play around some stuff? And I think the answer is yes. I think I'm finally ready to go up on my... Oh, maybe I'm not ready to go up on my vial. Okay, this thing's going to die. Spell can't be countered. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value uh, three or less. Okay. It's dead. Okay, uh, with that information in mind, I will actually not tick this thing up. So we can get our Lord in play. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna start attacking my opponent. Uh, I'll actually let give them the option to block if they want. Ooh, blowing up another creature. How rude! Okay, well, it's a mill control deck, apparently. For that, I will put my only... Lo I'll get an extra one damage in play. It's not going to hurt me. First negation, not giving, giving me a lot of value here. Field of Ruin. Well, okay, all things considered, uh, I think this game is a lock. Like, my opponent just doesn't have any mill stuff going on. None of this matters. They're empty-handed. I'm full-handed. Uh, I'm going to be able to put a Svaloon in play with hard, Force of Negation backup just to hard cast it. So I think the game's basically over. It's going to be one of those games where Mill control decked themselves to death. And they didn't have any like super bombshell cards like Extinction Event or anything like that. Another crab. I think I can just let that go. It's not a big deal. I have 29 cards in my deck, but my clock is pretty fast. I think my clock is fast. Also, I can't do anything about it. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to resolve. So the best thing to draw now would be a Tishana's Tidebinder. Just to Tidebind at least one of these crabs down. The best thing for my opponent would be to top deck... Um, Fetch lands from here on out. Tide Shaper's not bad. They take the whole damage, which means uh, this is lethal by next turn. And I think I think they're just lost. Uh, they can't get through two force negations. I mean, I guess they could draw another one of these long goodbye cards, but I don't think it'd be enough. All right, we won the match. Let's go on to uh, round two. We won the die roll. That is perfect. Perfect is a bit of an exaggeration, but I mean, <laughs> the hand plays itself. <laughs>
Turn one dock and turn two lord. Another lord, hex catcher, subtlety. Hopefully this covers all the bases. My opponent says, goes, I say, hi, good luck. My opponent goes, LOL. The luminous lamp. They should have a moth for an avatar. The lamp. Oh, my opponent says I'm one of your patrons. Oh, thanks. Is this a mirror then? Okay, maybe it's gonna be a merfolk mirror. If it's a merfolk mirror, I guess we're gonna. Whoops! I shouldn't play the Ottawa. That's like a bit silly. I could play the Cavern of Souls. That doesn't hurt much, but uh, I I gotta avoid playing the island. Resident Dockhand. Okay, there is some awkward stuff here though. Ooh, Lord of Atlantis. Oh. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, okay. I know exactly who I'm up against. There. Are, okay. The, this is a patron. Also, just in my Discord. Oh, they start off with Ether Vial. How awkward here. I just didn't know what their. Uh, I I didn't know what their username was. Okay, how to proceed? Uh, I guess we're gonna proceed with hex catcher into into something. Yeah. Would really like to pop off this subtlety. I wish I had one more blue card. Or maybe one more lord. I don't. The, the thing is, I would like to pop off this subtlety to delay my opponent, like w deprive them at least one more turn. But then I'd have nothing in hand. My opponent has a full hand of gas and ether vial, and they're playing out more cavern of souls. Oh no! It's gonna make all my cards look really bad. Lord of Atlantis these days is now just absolutely terrible in the mirror. It's just ter it's just terrible. It's just clunky for no reason. Please play Lord of Atlantis. Oh, Silver Gill Adept. Revealing a C Note Scout. So plenty of things to block with. Uh sure. I don't know what the point of doing all this is, but whatever. Oh, I guess you want, uh, okay, with the trigger on the stack, they want to make sure there's going to be something good or bad on top. So I can somewhat favorably attack into this. Oh, that helps. So if they want to trade two for one, uh, I think I'm okay with that. I'm just going to attack with a dock hand. I'm going to play Cavern of Souls and attack with Trickster. Yeah, I'm going to attack. Um, the block is awkward because they could double block and still fail to another hex catcher and just be behind. And of course, it goes through. I will play a cavern and pass. And if my opponent never plays an island, then probably I'm going to be in some trouble. They play the island. Okay, so now Lord of Atlantis online. Another vial. I don't know if playing. I mean, I, I don't know what they're working towards, but I don't know if playing the island to play that vial was a, a worthy play. Also, if I were to play the vial, I'd play it off of the Cavern of Souls because you're probably only going to be playing, what, one Merfolk and you could at least bluff. I don't know. Vapor Snag, like some sort of blue interaction. Spell Pierce. But here you're now telling me you don't have Spell Pierce in hand. 
Um, you don't have spreading seas. Well, you could have spreading seas, I guess. It just decreases the range of cards that you could probably have in your hand. Unless, un unless my opponent literally has, like, C-Note Scout. Two C-Note Scouts they want to play off of this. Uh, okay, I'll let my opponent do whatever they want here. They can attack. They don't want to attack. On blocking duty, are you? So we will tap down, I guess, the Silver Gill Adapt, because it's just the strongest creature. Usually, Trickster is something you want to sort of keep in the hole. Like, this is like a pretty key card. But in this case, I'm just going to burn it because I, I need to progress my board. Ether Vial is nice. Okay, so um, cards I have to be concerned about for my opponent. Uh, their own Trickster. Um, what else? Basically, Trickster. Like, Trickster is, like, just the best card in this matchup. I shouldn't say maybe the be best card, but it's, like, it's a very useful card. Because any moment it can disable the Lords. So, like, even if I play Lord of Atlantis and go for the kill, I just Trickster the Lord, and they take a lot less damage, and they kill me on the crackback. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play my island so I can get my subtlety online, and I will just attack for attack with the dock hand and the trickster. I don't think there's a lot of ways I can get blown out here. Wow, nothing. If they play anything at end of turn with Cavernousals, I will just snap off a subtlety and hope that's good enough. Nothing. Fun is just bluffing like crazy. What's in their hand? What, a bunch of subtleties or something? What is going on here? Well, their hand is just full of air. Do they just keep like a hand of like vile silver gill adapt and C note scout and hope that it was just gonna. That was good enough? Fetch land. Yes, yes, help the clock, please help the clock. It's possible that like me passing with this much mana is just grossly representing. Okay, so uh, I will attempt to. I don't want to wait long. Uh, I should try to get as much value out of this subtlety as I can, if I can get any value out of it at all. If there's a Tishana's Tide Binder, then so be it. This is fine. So if I play Lord next turn, I can attack for four, seven, eight, nine. Just one short, apparently. Can attack in the air with subtlety. Didn't evoke a casting cost and an ability, or did I think about that wrong? Uh, I didn't evoke it. Opponent's asking, isn't evoke a casting cost? It is. Uh, it is. It is an alter, alternate casting cost. I guess they were hoping to counter my evoke or something. Uh, okay, mute of all down. Trying to analyze this situation. Do they have Lord of Atlantis themselves and they just don't want to buff my team? One thing I'm definitely going to do going into next turn is I am going to send this subtlety to its death. <laughs> it's just going to attack. It's going to attack and uh, hit anything. If it exchanges itself with anything, that's completely fine. A dark hand. Now it is actually it's uh I don't know when it got unblockable, but this has been unblockable for quite a few turns. Now that I think about it, so I think I'm gonna swing with everything, including the trickster. Uh, still, blocks are not very good, uh, and also when we get to this point of the game, like the more damage I can do to my opponent, the the less likely they can counterattack and kill me in one shot. So I should take as much opportunity to deal as much damage as possible. 
and there's still no profitable blocks here like even if they trickster my hex catcher uh like everything will at least just trade And like trading subtlety for tide binder is no problem for me because when you're behind when you're down on life you want as many resources on the board as possible to like make a counter attack so like the more resources i can exchange while still chipping away damage the less likely my opponent has any chance of like getting back in the game and then after following it up with a dock hand uh it will be i'll, I'll be in a really i'll be in a really good spot okay so tide binder is going to exchange with subtlety which is fine Salty was just a 3-3 on the ground anyway. Especially like especially in the Merfolk Mirror, you really don't want to be put in a spot where you have to be blocking because at any moment your opponent just kill you in one shot with like a, a, a an island walk lord, right? Okay, so there's gonna be a big trade here. Uh, I'm fine with everything. Unfortunately, I do not have reinforcements okay let's see if we can i don't know beta force negation or something and now next turn i'm in a pretty good spot to play i, I don't know why they have to resign now they still have some life points left but um next turn i would be in a good position to play lord of atlantis and really put the pressure on my opponent because all they exchanged all their creatures so they don't have as many creatures like counterattack against me Opponent says all lands in hand, so they did keep like vile. Well, like, maybe they had a Tishana's Tidebinder as well. Okay, stuff that we want in this matchup. Anything that interacts with the board uh, or can interact with the board, especially for free. Like, so if we want to bring in Trickster, we want to bring in Subtlety, we want to bring in Dismember. Those are all good cards. Um, cards you want to side out or anything that doesn't interact with the board very well. Force Negation is not very good. Like, it. You'd have to be lucky to like snipe off a dismember at just the right moment or that they have ether vial in hand uh outside of that it just doesn't do a whole lot and cards that are not good in this matchup is lord of atlantis this is, card is terrible uh unfortunately i cannot i would side out the last two if i had anything to bring in i don't really want i don't really love stern scolding um maybe it's not bad it's better than lord of atlantis it could it might like, it's cheap. Like, it's a cheap piece of interaction. But if they have Cameron of Souls, then it's, it's useless. Yeah, I guess we'll just hold on to Lord of Atlantis. <laughs> Opponent's asking, can I ask how you board after we finish? Uh... That's very awkward. I guess I'm gonna keep it though. Merfolk Trickster, Tishana's Tidebinder. The curve is bad, but I do have a subtlety to like stall me into the game. Tishana's Tidebinder is like pfft, sort of crappy, but whatever, I'll keep it. But this is definitely a like definitely on the poorer end of hands that I can have on the draw. Yeah, these sort of starts are really bad for the Simic deck. Um, how big of a deal is that going to be? I may not play this island for a while. I'm going to let that resolve. And I'd rather subtlety a 2-drop that's going to soak up more mana. Drew Master of the Pearl Trident, which is very good. Can I afford to subtlety twice? Probably not. Silver Gill Adapt revealing Silver Gill Adapt. All right, let's pitch a subtlety. You want cards? Yeah, I'm off Silver Gill Adapt. Like, even for this matchup, it's terrible. Now they put it on the bottom. Okay, attack me for one. Uh, 
Uh, the turn to Ether Vial, classic, so classic of this deck. Uh, okay, I guess I'm gonna play a land and pass and hope to eat this Tide Shaper. And if I don't eat the Tide Shaper, then um, that's okay. I didn't take any damage. Oh, there. <laughs> okay, apparently I should have played the uh, turn to Ether Vial. They have a plan for this? No, nope, no plan. Just hope that I hoped that I had Hex Catcher into another Tide Shaper. Well, I got another land. Um Okay, let's just lean on being aggressive and then when the Aether Vile triggers, I'm just going to Tishana's Tide Binder it. Always lean on aggression. And this will like stifle my opponent's mana. I guess I don't need the upkeep trigger. No, this 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 card may do nothing. I would rather this card did absolutely nothing. Now we're gonna see another Silver Gill Adapt. So the problem with Silver Gill Adapt, I mean, well, the advantage to Silver Gill Adapt right now is uh, it can be played off of the Mutavault and uh, Breeding Pool. The disadvantage to Silver Gill Adapt, it is not, it's not a very good interactive card here. Interestingly, no attack into my Tishana's Tidebinder. Ooh, um, I think, think I think I play Svelune, attack with just the trickster and if they want to exchange that's fine and by okay by playing Svelune, I'm gonna basically telling my opponent all right if you have dismember you sort of have to play it no I guess they don't have to play it now they can they, they can like dismember my Svelune. and if they dismember the Svelune, that's fine because then I still have master of the pearl trident for the following turn um, Yeah, let's lean on attacking still. Like, I'm ahead. I want to push damage. Um, if they don't want to push damage, they want to block. That's fine. I'm still ahead on the board. I don't want to attack with Tishana's Tidebinder, though, because if I attack, they block. Then they unlock the vial. That's, like, probably their only way to come back from this. If I, I think... Well, I know. It's, re it's really hard for my opponent to make a move here. Because you do want to keep your creatures on the board, but at the same time, if your life total gets too low, then you have no opportunity to counterattack yourself. Probably the best thing to do is to exchange Silver Gill Adept for this one. Okay, C-Note Scout. My Dock Hand did better than the C-Note Scout. Okay, we have another island. Mind you, remember, my opponent should be at 16 life, but they uh, fat shocked with a Breeding Pool. I was in a situation against um, Zeagull, who is the pioneer of the Simic Merfolk deck. He actually killed himself in the uh, in the challenge that we played. We were both playing for top eight. Uh, I won my game versus him because he took two damage on turn two with his breeding pool, and that was two damage too much that he could take, and I just had an easy three-turn clock that he couldn't do anything about. Because once he went to put himself down from 20 to 18, uh, I just had three Island Walk attacks with three creatures. And actually, if he didn't take that damage, he would have beaten me. In that game, at least. So for all the... Um, this it, it kills you. Like this, it actually kills you. I think that is uh, completely overlooked by the Simic players. Now, do I think is it worth C-Note Scout and the green cards? I do. I think I think it balances out. I, th I think if I played Simic Merfolk that I could win a pretty big tournament with it or top eight a modern challenge. But the um, with enough downsides attached to it, I would just rather play a regular blue Merfolk deck. And for that, for the I have access to Simic Merfolk. I I do I I can't be certain. I don't know how bad or how good my matchup is versus Zoo at the moment. And I do believe Simic has like a much bigger edge versus Zoo than I, than I will, uh, and it is a deck to beat. 
But all those things being said, um, I prefer to just play mono blue. Okay, so nothing from our opponent. And the good news is that my opponent cannot do squat now. Uh, opponent doesn't have access to Merfolk Trickster at the moment, so now we can play just a Lord. Pretty freely attack. Oh, you know what's a car? You know what's something I didn't think about? Tishana's Tie Binder. I could Tishana's Tie Binder. My opponent's Tishana's Tie Binder. Okay, my opponent says good games. I'm pretty sure. Well, we'll find out in a minute. You can Tishana's Tie Binder this Faloon. Can I get another Tishana's Tie Binder? This is 11 damage. What's the most damage you can do on the crackback here? You can play one lord, attack me for three, six, nine, twelve. That's about it. <laughs> it's very funny. Just, just mere like thirty minutes ago, I told uh, I told this uh, user in my Discord like I wouldn't play Silver Gill Adept. I wouldn't play Silver Gill Adept. It's, just, it's not a good, it's not good enough. And it's there's too many matchups where it's just not good enough. It actually would be good here, given how uh, the hand played out, because uh, the hand started with Breeding Pool and Mutavault. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the island was. I don't know. I think they drew that island. I don't know what's in their hand. Anyway, I'm not blocking any of this stuff. All right, and if we get to untap, then we just win because Tishana's Tide Binder can interact with Merfolk Trickster. I'll easily get in the last few points of damage. Uh, such a wonky matchup. Um, I don't need any of this. I'll just attack. With Trickster, I'd still be in a good shape because they have to chump block everything. Well, I mean, I guess they could trade with two of these creatures. Okay, so this is ETBs. Okay, is there a subtlety? That would be very interesting. Oh, actually, I, I didn't even think about that. Wow, Ward 1. Totally forgot about that myself. I'd have let that resolve in a paper event. So everything is unblockable. And I win the game. Overkill. All right, and that's, uh, and with that, I don't know, like, I, I, I guess saving the four life wouldn't have changed very much in this matchup, but um, I think Mono Blue is, was way more equipped to win this match than uh, Simic was. They take more damage, C-Note Scout, being card advantage, these card advantage cards are not very important, you want to be more interactive, that's what I like Doc, like, that's what I like about Doc Hand, personally, it is an interactive card. It can tap my opponent's cards down. If they have an island, I have clear unblockable. People can't be counting out Dock Hand. They're, this, is the, this card is a stronger, in terms of more beefy card, but I do not think that it is strictly better than Dock Hand because Dock Hand is still has more has way more utility than, say, C Note Scout does. But um, uh, anyway, th those are my thoughts between the two match. It's still Simic is still perfectly fine to play. Perfectly fine. But uh, I, w I don't like how the Merfolk community is just saying this is just an outright better version of Merfolk. Mono Blue is trash. I think that's ridiculous. Okay, let's go to round three. All right, we lost the die roll. We're on the draw. Sort of a clunky hand with a bunch of Sveiloons, but I'm going to keep it anyway because A, we do have Aether Vile, so our top decks are going to be pretty good uh, if we top deck more creatures. And I can curve straight into Sveiloon. And we have a backup Sveiloon if uh, the first Sveiloon dies. And we do have Force Negation for, and we can pitch a Svelun if we really need to. Although in this case, if I draw Force Negation, I'd prefer that there was an island here. So that, uh, it's always convenient to have, like, Karen of Souls, Island, Island, when you have Force Negation, then you're not, like, actually forced to 2 for one yourself with this thing. Are we going to get Spell Pierce or something? Oh, Spell Pierce. What does that mean? I played Watery Grave. I have no idea what that means. I don't know, maybe bl many blue-black decks. I don't know, is a Shadow? Start off with a Fetch Shock. Maybe we're gonna have another Fetch Shock. Preordain. 
Yeah, I should quickly see. Does um, Goro's Vengeance play Spell Pierce? They could. I don't think they're known for playing Spell Pierce, but I mean, they could. They went two top, zero bottom. Another Sveiloon! Could never have enough Sveiloons out there, you know? Well, if this is a deck full of removal, I'm, I'll am i be happy to have 100 billion Sveiloons. I'll be fine with that. <laughs> Alright, Hexcatcher. Uh, yeah, whatever. It, it looks like it's some sort of shadow deck. And I'll just play. I, I could actually just get completely tempoed out here. That's possible. Where they, I mean, they could, uh, based on how they're playing this game, it looks like they've got a Murktide in hand. They can make their Murkut a 1, 2, 3. This will be a spell probably uh, 4. So you can make it a 7, 7. That's like a 3 turn clock, and then I'll die. Oh, okay. I'm lucky. No Murktide. But the removal will be... Maybe we can make our opponent paranoid that we have a spell pierce. Well, Svalin's not very good when I have no creatures on the board. Also not good if my opponent has like a Bowmaster or something. Oh, there is red in this deck. Is there red in this deck or they just wanted two Svalins? Uh, was it Surveil Lands? Okay, now, I don't know, depending... Oh, God. Really had to do that. Alright, we get another Fatal Push. Kill my Svelin again. But that's the last time you're going to do this. Don't do it anymore. But now I'm uh, in danger of getting hit by Flame of Anor, which is unfortunate. But again, nothing I can do about that. Hmm, play Lord of Atlantis or Svelun. How much removal do you have left? I mean, if you have another removal spell... Um, okay, there's not actually a whole lot of things that can kill Svelun, though. Okay, so it's basically going to be Flame of Anor, another Snapcaster Mage. Because I'm sure there's Lightning Bolts in there that are, like, just useless. And I'm sure there's counter spells. I'm sure there's drawn a lock too. So I'm just gonna have to hope that there are no removal spells here. <laughs> Go to your turn, please. Turn my force negation on. Hmm. At least that's a sign of desperation. Am I right? Am I right? It's a little sign of desperation. could be one of those types of decks that's actually just not playing any counter spells at all oh okay that changes a little uh, a little bit uh because i can play two spells in one turn okay so i won't play Svelun out if they have removal for any of this i really don't care i mean maybe this is where we're gonna see lightning bolt snapcaster mage okay Fatal push. Okay. I'm glad I didn't ask Svelun out at that time. Hit dead. Um, just wondering when's the right time to play this Hex Catcher. Maybe out there. Uh, the, the, I would hate that they have subtlety in hand. I doubt they have that. If they do, actually, if they did, maybe I should have played on their turn, and then if they subtlety that, then I'm fine with what's going on here with uh, Svelun. Because they know I have Svelun in hand. This is a known card. I don't think blocking one helps me very much. Oh, actually, it hedges versus... Uh, um, it might hedge a little bit versus Bowmasters, because that would suck. Yeah, okay. 
I'll actually block. Give me a little bit more time. Otherwise, it's like a four turn clock. Let's do this again. I'll play my land, pass. Again, Fiddle Push doesn't actually work. Lightning Bolt doesn't work. Thank God! But this is probably where they play, I don't know, Expressive Iteration or um, something. If they attack, I don't block. Okay, well, it never didn't happen. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm going to play Dock Hand. Just in case I draw a Trickster or a Hex Catcher, if I attack, Snap blocks, and they try to bolt Svaloon, and I draw, like, a Flash Creature, then I could you know, get around the, uh, they'll be like my, they'll, I'll make Svelon indestructible. Ugh. They just drew that. Um, weird that they're, oh, they're going to try to kill it. <laughs> well, I did not draw a flash creature. So I guess they can chomp with yeah, they could do that too. Okay. How frustrating. All right, it's a one one versus a two one. Now I'm. I guess I'm just waiting to die now. Who's the beat down? Them or me? I guess them, especially since this Bowmasters can like pick me off too. Tashana's Tidebinder, not bad. So maybe, maybe this they have no red in their deck. It just looks like they have red in their deck. Like they got nothing. I could have used this actually when the Bowmaster thing came up. Because I could have drawn, it triggers again, then I play Tashana's Tidebinder, turn off this stupid thing, they don't get that extra token. times do they two for one me here Ooh, you're scared huh i'm gonna hold the tishana's tide binder because that's like a counter to snapcaster mage we'll play muta vault so that we have uh tishana's tide binder and force negation up Let's see how many they have a lot like they have a lot of stuff and it's a counter to that card for example That's really weird, because they can't... It's got an island walk. I guess... I don't even know what the idea was. Um, do they have another Bowmasters? Is that the point? Maybe that's the point. Whatever. I'm going to turn this thing off. Or maybe I should have encouraged the second Bowmasters to get played. I don't know. The way the game has played out, maybe my opponent has a lot of Bowmasters in hand. Well, only have enough mana to hold up one force negation, so maybe I'm gonna send in the t uh, I'm gonna send in a muta vault. Um, eat, clear up some bowmasters.
Or I guess if they're representing another Bowmasters, that is going to be awkward. Well, then they have to trade... What if they have another... All their Fatal Pushes. I think I'm going to let that resolve. I'm going to hold on to my Force Negation for like expressive iteration or something to that nature. No counter spells on this deck. At least not that we see yet. There's gotta be Merc Tide in this deck. Like there's just gotta be Merc Tide. Okay, they put a Blood Crypt in the graveyard. Oh, then there's gotta be what's it called? I probably they probably think I definitely have force negation. They have to believe that. Dismember. Dismember. Okay, I think that's worth attacking with. So if they double block with the Bowmasters, I'll dismember one and clean up the board. I have no problem with that. Might be awkward for them. They might think I could have a hex catcher or something. Wow, no blocks. Okay. Totally fine with that. They're like, we need to keep these resources. Okay, now our opponent's flooding out a little bit, which is a okay with me. And on our unblockable dock hand gonna come through for us. Alright, now we can we have double force negation up. What is this? Fetch, shock, no block, then resign? Or is this like another the fourth fatal push? Oh. I have no idea what that was all about. Uh okay, um, Gonna sign like this. Do is there an Urborg in play? No. Dismember one. <laughs> counter spell. I'll counter that back. Okay, so they have nothing. I have two somethings. Flame of Anor is not particularly good right now. Now would be the last time I, I now is the worst time to see something like uh oh Shield Dread. That's terrible. That's the worst thing I want to see. So I'm gonna lose two life. Lord? Just put my opponent out of their misery? No. <laughs> of all the things, oh man! They just stopped! I just had a dismember! I just had a dismember! Now what am I going to do? I get attacked for four. Guess I die is like the answer here. So I can still win if I top deck a lord, right? Put my opponent down to four. They're going to go to six. I'm going to go to two. Yeah, this is brutal. They might, yeah, they just might sit on defense because uh, force me to have my lord. All right, come on. Come on, Island Walk Lord. They got a good top deck. Give me a good top deck. Mm, not quite good enough. But if they want to attack, I can double block now. So we got that going for us. And I can still attack with this dock hand. Um, they showed a spell pierce actually in this game, so maybe I should not use my mana up. Just activate, put the hex catcher in play. Yeah, they had, they showed a spell pierce on turn like the very first turn.
So if they do attack, I have to double block, otherwise I go to like, <laughs> I go to two, I draw a card for the turn, I die. Not a good spot to be in. What are the resources? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Actually, I had uh, ten lands. It's amazing the game that I could play here. Right, they're going to play patiently. Um, if I were them, I'd probably attack. I mean, if I draw an Island Walk Lord, I mean, you're dead. I mean, you're just dead. If I draw another Hex Catcher, I can attack with both, and you have to block with Shieldred. Looks like they're going to try to do something. Cole against command, bring back Snapcaster Mage. Absolutely not. In your dreams. This is just like a classic Grixis grindy control deck. This really is very similar to... Oh, boy. oh man, I got excited for a second. I thought this is Ottawara. It was not. <laughs> uh, okay, let's attack for two again, I guess. Block, take three. No, I don't have anything close to lethal here. Uh, pass. Now I'm in now I'm a really fragile position. I really need to draw like a lord in that last turn. So I had three Svaloons in this game. And I was up against two bowmasters and infinite removal. Okay, come on. Island Walk Lord, please. 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 Or okay, that mm, yeah, it sort of works. Okay, so, do I attack with everything? Maybe I'm forced to. I think I'm forced to attack with everything. Another card actually would be fine would be Tishana's Tidebinder. I think I'm forced to attack with everything. And if you block, you have to block the Tishana's Tidebinder. I have to hope my opponent has nothing. Like just two counter spells or something. Oh, they're going to do something. No, don't do anything. So we're counting on you doing nothing. It says waiting for D Pelliser. Unless there are, are they in the, no, they're not even in the blocking step. You paying for something? Or they just have priority. Hard to tell when my opponent has something or they want to do something. I haven't played against a deck like this since like 2017, 2016. Good old Snapcaster Mage something. So do they have do they have enough wizards to play? I guess not. I was just thinking, um, Probably this could have Flame of Anor, but probably it doesn't. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. Well, that's very bad for me. <laughs> um, take five. I block again. I think I have to sack my dock hand, to be honest. And then if they block Hexcatcher, I've, I've uh, played the other one, hit for five, they go to one. Oh, but they didn't have to do anything, they just pass the turn after that and I lose. So what if I sack this, that doesn't do anything, sack this, that doesn't do anything, they just block. Okay, I have to sock the dock hand and hope that does something. Right, they make the correct block. I do not have enough lethal. 
Yeah, they can just pass the turn afterwards. Unfortunately. All right, they had one too many removal spells. Actually, I mean, they drew Shield Dread at the perfect moment. I mean, I would have spent this Dismember immediately on it if I could. So we are going to bring in all the Dismembers. It's a little counterintuitive, but, like, first off, um, Shield Dread is everything. But second off, it's quite good versus Bowmasters because you want your Svelune to be as live as possible. And uh, we can... Svelune against Bowmasters used to suck. But between, like, uh, Tishana's Tidebinder and Dismember, you can disable enough Bowmasters that Svelune actually is going to be enabled and draw you cards every turn. Sadly, we had three Svelunes. They all died. All of them. To a steady stream of removal. I'm wondering if Stern Scolding is going to be a gas. They have so many uh, creatures. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side in and see what happens. Maybe I'll take out one. No, but they have to draw. They have to have Bowmasters. Like, what are the odds they don't get Bowmasters? They don't get Snapcaster Mage that entire game. They have to have... Well, I don't know. Okay, we'll bring in three. Um, Spell Pierce sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. I'm going to take out a few Vials. Because this is going to be an attrition-based matchup. Probably I want all the subtlety. I gotta take something out though. Oh, Hexcatcher. Yeah, Hexcatcher is not good in a shield. Sorry. Um. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Bowmaster's meta. Oh, and I don't. Uh, okay, we'll bring in Trickster. Take out some Force Negations. It's just a little too clunky. If I can bring in one other card. If they have Thoughtseize, Spell Pierce sucks. Uh, so Stern Scolding still has value, though. Okay, do you know what? Bowmasters is so. Bowmasters and Snapcaster Mage is so valuable in this matchup. Let's bring in some of those. I, maybe I should have still like two Force and Negations. It's a two for one, but sometimes there are these bonds. Like, I don't know. For all I know, they're playing the one rank. I just don't know. Okay, we'll submit this deck. I'll go first. I'll keep. This is not an ideal hand. Um, four mana sources. Just a big pile of merfolk. It's not exciting. If one of these, if one or two of these lands were mutavolts, this hand would be a lot better. Opponent all goes to six. Doesn't really mean much. It's much more exciting for people to mulligan when they're on the play because they don't get the card back but they're on the draw so they get an extra card anyway so mulligans on the draw are not nearly as punished okay they do have thoughtsies so not bringing in spell pierce was the good play because if someone thought see the, there is a big conflict between thoughtsies and spell pierce because if they thought sees you and they see spell pierce Usually they can just play around Spell Pierce perfectly, so it's like they got two cards in one, almost always. Not thrilled about putting this thing out there, but I will. Um, I think I'm also going to put Dock Hand in play, and the reason I'm doing it now is that if my opponent wants to play Shieldred's Edict, I would sack the Dock Hand, not the Lord of Atlantis. Well, I drew more lands. That's um is it worth it to attack or to tap lands down? Oh, I guess we'll just attack. And I guess I'm gonna save Tishana's Tide Binder for like, I don't know, a Snapcaster Mage that enters the battlefield or something. Maybe there's enough ETBs. Or a fetch. I could hit a fetch, I don't mind hitting a fetch. Hitting fetch is good. Tie binder interacts with the opponent quite well. Fetches, bowmasters, um, snapcaster mage, uh, shield red.
what do you want to do, Paul? What do you want to do? You want to edict me on my upkeep or something? You can do it if you want. I won't stop you. Mana base looks completely different this game. Last game it was all fetches and shocks. This time it's all basic lands. Well, now I think, well, I mean, there's like, shouldn't be like that big of a decision here. Okay. And we're running bad. Like, when you're up against an attrition, when you're up against some sort of attrition based deck, and you keep a hand with like four mana sources, you sort of hope to like draw into more gas. And we immediately drew into uh, the higher ratio of lands over spells. So, like, even for that alone, uh, you can lose over that. But maybe my opponent is in the same jam. All right, 15 turn clock, let's go. And some of you might be asking, well, why aren't we making good use of our Tishana's Tide? Like, why aren't we just throwing our Tishana's Tidebinder and attacking? Because we need to get value from this thing. Like, they're going to Snapcaster Mage, Thoughtseize. Like, we can't let that happen. We can't let them, like, two-for-one us. So this is going to go on the stack, and I'm just going to immediately uh, Tishana's Tidebinder. And I think that's a better use of our resources. Subtlety? Pitching a Snapcaster Mage? That's insane! And they're just getting back a Thoughtseize. Are they gonna, like, save their... I'm gonna put the Tishana's Tidebinder back on top. It's a perfectly good card. Nothing wrong with that card. Or maybe they have a Shield Dread. Um, they can cast this. I'll just dismember the Snapcaster Mage. Nothing. Oops, no, no, I'm not gonna raise it. I'm guessing, I don't know, do they have Colgan's command to like kill this, bring their Snapcaster back? But then I'll Tishana's Tidebinder, the Snapcaster Mage. So they know I got Tidebinder in hand. They know. They know. Got an Ottawara. So I actually have a little bit of a reason to tick the vial up to three so I can play Tishana's Tidebinder to hit something and then bounce it back. Maybe I'll do that by next turn. That was wild. They just threw away his, they could just let the thing resolve. They have a 2-1 in play, big deal. Then just go Snapcaster Mage, try to do it again. That was a greedy, greedy play. I think that was greedy. Uh, I guess we'll leave this on two still. Maybe we'll go up to three, actually. Yeah, we're gonna go up to three. Oh, just as I say that, we get a Mass of the Fill Tread, and that's just great. Perfectly timed, Master of the Pearl Trident. Perfectly timed. Is the, Oh, is this where we're going to see the Colgan's command? No, not quite. Okay, what's getting bounced? Um, sure. Seems weird to me. I, spent, I, I don't think that's a good use of their resources. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, I also could have actually countered it with uh, Tishana's Tidebinder. I didn't think about that. We got a Trickster. Gonna do some tricksty things. Maybe. Maybe. 
Oh, our time is getting low. We're, we're at 10 minutes, our opponent's at 12. It's convenient to have... Oh, it sacks a creature, huh? Okay, I'll sack this one. The one that's not attacking. Uh, I'd prefer to continue to get the steady points of damage in, if possible. All right, now we're in a pretty good spot. If I do so say so myself. Another Lord. So let's hope we don't get. Let's hope we don't see a sweeper. All right, preordain. Dig for the good stuff. Two top, zero bottom. It's a bit concerning. The one ring. All right, well that's getting hit immediately. So maybe there is some reason to have force of negation. Okay. So you got the one ring to rule them all. Is there any reason to have some force negations in here? Because we don't have hex catcher. Am I over? Oh, yeah, <laughs> we got Snapcaster Mage so covered, like so covered. I wonder if they took out their Bowmasters. Bowmasters used to be so strong versus Merfolk, but we completely adapted. Or at least I completely adapted by getting rid of all the one toughness creatures. I can't speak for everybody out there. Otherwise, the Bowmasters would just rip everything up in this deck. Yeah, I want to sort of take out two cards, but I'm not sure what. One ring is pretty strong. That is a, not a good card to have around. Maybe uh, I feel like tripping maybe a stern scold. Okay, I'm on the draw. How good is stern scolding on the draw? It's gonna be awkward. More awkward for sure. But it's still good. Still good. Hmm. So I wanna put two force of negations in the deck. Not that many. You don't really want to flood out on this card in this matchup, that's for sure. I like having subtlety because I, I don't have to worry about Snapcaster Mage ever blocking it. Same thing with Bowmasters. So it's just a, something that can freely attack in the air. Occasionally you can hit like their Shieldra, their Bowmasters, their Snapcaster Mage and get value from that. Look at look at the value of Rishan and Dockhand. Just attack for one constantly. Island Wagi. I don't have to worry about anything. Don't worry, and it doesn't have to worry about Bowmasters either. Okay, if I'm going to shave... Let's shave a stern scolding. Let's shave maybe a dismember. Maybe a dismember. It's tough to do that though. It's tough. Feels tough. I'll keep the rest. Or maybe I could keep get rid of a trickster. We're gonna keep one dismember or a stern. Yeah, maybe we'll keep the dis I would like to test stern scolding here. Though it doesn't hit shield red. But it's like a hard counter to Snapcaster Mage. Keep. It's quite a lovely hand, actually. The curve is very nice. So I'm going to start this. Dock hand first. Ooh, definitely dock hand first. Then go turn to Tide Shaper, hit the um, tar pit. I mean, depending on what my opponent does, uh, I might not do anything. Yeah, if they're going to hold up two mana. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I can go Aether Vile, attack, pass. The reason for this, I don't want to attack. I don't want to, like, tap. I don't want to play uh, Tide Shaper kicked and then they Bowmasters and kill it. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack for one. Actually, I can attack for nothing. 
Maybe three drops I'm concerned about. Maybe not. Okay, let's just start attacking, I guess. And we'll get our Aether Vile in play. And then we'll try to play a Tide Shaper next turn. If they go uh, Bowmasters, I will snap that Stern Scolding off faster than you can say fast. That card is such a pain. Such a pain. Oh no, Coligan's Command. I'm going to eat up my Aether Vial, isn't it? I'm going to eat up something. Hmm. Interesting! Because I can play a Svaloon. Okay, I guess I'm going to attack first, play Svaloon, and then if they try to interact with anything... I'll, I'll put a Tide Shaper in play. This actually works out quite well. Please play, play Terminate. Please. That'd be so good for me. Because <laughs> they go Terminate, I flash in uh, Tide Binder. Deal 5 damage to target creature. Well, welcome to Blowout Town. Population you. So I was thinking, if they terminate Svaloon, I violin Tide Shaper. They can't Fatal Push Tide Shaper or Dawkin because they don't have enough mana. The One Ring to rule them all. All right, it's a race. Uh, a race I don't win immediately. But I have tons of creatures in play. I get to draw a card every turn. Draw an extra card every turn. So we will attack with Svaloon. Draw an extra card. Ottawa, interesting. And um, play Manamo. And I guess at upkeep, we're going to tap something down with Dock Hand. Probably the red source. Keep Manamo open, I guess, to untap my Svaloon if necessary. So they do have Flame of Anor. That's I mean, I'm not gonna say it's greedy or anything. There's just not that many wizards in the deck, that's all. Opponent floats a black. Alright, you take one life from your ring. I'm gonna draw two more cards, sure, yeah. Do they think if they're in that in their main phase? Well, I guess they might may, maybe they want to draw some extra cards while they're at it here. With a black floating. Fatal push on the Tide Shaper, unfortunately. Well, I could save it. Okay, so with this um, happening, I'm going to put the Lord of Atlantis in play. And the reason I want to put this in play right now is if it dies, uh, there's still no way to interact with my Svaloon, which is our which is our baby. Oh, yeah, it's important. I have Ottawa active. Um, I have a legendary creature out. Trickster. Sure, I think I can attack with everything. If they play, um, I have another Trickster. If they play Snapcaster Mage, I would file in Trickster and kill it. <clears throat> Soon the One Ring is going to kill them, unless they can find another One Ring. I wonder how rare that One Ring is. It is an awkward way I can lose. That's for sure. I can I can lose through the stupid one ring. One ring into one ring into one rings happened to me many times before. Many times before. Spade Loon, such gas. Would be more gas if Bowmasters didn't exist. 
Don't know why they have to hate on card draw so much. Look, this card drew seven, six cards. What do I care? I think they just have another one ring. This one ring looks different though. That's special. And what that means is I can tap something down with Dock End next turn. I won't play any tricksters, there's no point. Opponent's life total is like insanely fragile anyway, anyhow. Did they just not draw any lands or are they just thinking about what land they want to play? Maybe they're fetch lands. There's an Ottawara. There's some consideration to take the, taking this thing up to three, so that if I draw a Tidebinder, it's uncounter, like unsubtleable. But I'm just gonna leave it on two for now. Fatal push on my lord. This like is meaningless. What does this even do at this point? Um. I'll just let it resolve. I have like more than, I think I have more than lethal. I hope, <laughs> I hope I have more than lethal at this point. Just attacking to draw, attacking to draw. Play Tide Shaper just to cut off the red mana. I guess looking for subtlety or something. Oh, they do find one. Uh, I'll put Tide Shaper on the bottom. And I guess I just won't do anything with Dock Hand. I need the three mana to protect my Svaloon potentially. Or to do something. So like the dream would be my opponent taps out to play Shield Red. That's the dream. Right, I tap out is strong, but they like they play Shield Red. I like play Trickster. I blow my opponent out somehow. Because they want to draw, they want to gain life while playing the one ring, and I can like interact with this like a million ways now. So if they tap this, I can dismember the shield dread, um, I can trickster it. Okay, so what's going to happen here? If we go to end of turn, okay, I guess we will. We'll go for the dismember first. Okay, so in response, they want to gain a bunch of life. Uh, but in response, I have a response. And we'll make the Shieldred lose all its abilities. Now, if they play something like Flame of Anor here, they'll still be screwed <laughs> because I have another trickster. Unless they could do something about that. All right, so they're gonna draw two cards, but um, this looks like the end of the road for our opponent because there is nothing I think they can play that changes anything here. Uh, I guess I will sack my trickster. Yeah, okay. This should be over. If they won't go Fatal Push on Spaloon, uh, I'll flash in Trickster and should be over. And we win the match. All right, that was round three. That took a long time. Um, can't say like we're going to be super... I, I have no idea what our matchup here is like. Uh, certainly cards like, what's it called? Stern Scolding are going to turn it around by quite a bit. But 
uh, I could definitely see games where oh, I just never draw Dismember and or have no answer to the One Ring because things like Force Negation are just too awkward here. All right, we're going to round four. It's round four. We're on the draw versus Eggy Benny. That's a bit awkward. Was it a Gigantha deck? Hmm. Hmm. What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to keep it. Although, like, this hand's totally fine on the play, but a lot weirder on the draw because I have no one drop. But the hand otherwise is just good. So maybe if I... Okay, my opponent does nothing on turn one. That helps a lot. Got another Svaloon. Pass the turn back. Oh, you think you can pass the turn? Yo, I, I can do that too. Oh, the classic Triome. Looks like this is going to be... Creativity. Uh, this looks like it's going to be creativity. And it looks like I am going to be facing a Ren and Six. Oh! I'm going to be facing none of that. Is this just a regular Zoo deck? I thought they can't play Gigantha in the, um, in the other version. Sorry, the version with the Ley Line. Or am I wrong? Let me look at a random domain zoo deck. Oh no, they can play Gigantha. So hold on, what's the deal? Leyline of the Guild Pact is... Oh, it de Leyline of the Guild Pact doesn't technically have the same mana symbol. I forgot. That's that's the weird catch to this. Is there anything I can hit? They have Fable the Mirror Breaker. I am probably just super far behind. As we speak, I really needed that one drop. If I had it, this wouldn't be so bad. But I don't have it, so it's bad. But the good news is we get a little bit of experience versus the new, the well, I wouldn't say new Domain Zoo, but the new hot deck on the block, Domain Zoo! <laughs> the best Domain deck prior to Violent Outburst was Domain Rhinos. Another sign of Draco. One drop. One drop! It's not a one drop, really. What if my opponent has no removal? So, like, the ideal thing to do here is to play Svaloon. That's the best way to curve out. But I'm getting domed for eight in the air in two turns. I have no time for that. We have to race as quickly as humanly possible. I don't know. Maybe even playing Svaloon and trying to... Okay, what can I do? Attack for three. Next turn I can attack for ten. Oh, God. I need my opponent to fetch shock. Knew my opponent desperately do fetch shock, play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's what I need here. So it happens when you don't have anything to do on turn one. That was the that's why I have like force and negation and subtlety in my deck. So I have like something to do even if I miss on my turn one play. Miss out on my turn one play. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gonna die horribly. I guess not completely hopeless. I can top deck Trickster. I might do something. <laughs> Whoa. Am I seeing triplets? The, well, this is late. If I drew... Th now, if I drew this last turn, this is going to be a game changer because I would have played Svaloon instead. Uh, right? I needed this like actually before the second Scion came out. Then the whole game would be different. But um, it didn't come out. I'm dead. I cannot interact with any of that stuff in the air. I mean, I can block with subtlety, I guess. All right. What do I want? Okay, we definitely want Trickster. We definitely want Dismember. We definitely want subtlety, even on the play. Uh, yeah, we'll bring an Aether Gust. So basically, this card only exists in my sideboard for this matchup. Um, they have a good chunk of, like, uh, spells, but I still don't think I'm going to bring in Spell Purist. It's like it's a, it's an okay card though. Cards I don't like so much. Okay, Force Negation is an awkward two-for-one. I also don't really like Tishana's Tidebinder. The problem with Tidebinder is if you're passing with three mana up, they can play around this so easily. So people will trick themselves into thinking, oh, it interacts with Leyline Binding. Oh, I can blow up a ter ter Territorial Cavu. 
they can see this see right through this like if you're if you're like deprived on mana it's gonna be so hard to pull off this Tishana's tie binder especially on the draw so i'd say this is more playable on the play but just garbage on the draw uh what i really want is a lean curve i want to play it one drop two drops uh, Svaloon's fine, three drops, and just curve out and beat them. Uh, this is just going to be a tempo slugfest. Strength Scolding is not actually that very very good in this matchup because, like, Territorial Kabu and Nishoba Tr Brawler can both be really big on the stack, so this card actually is Stone Cold Garbage. And another thing, like, if my opponent has, like, the Scion Draco hands, this is just useless. I mean, you're just on the back foot. You're going to be tapping out anyway. There's just not a lot of room to, like, pass with three mana um and then get them like you can but they they're more mana efficient than us they're like way more mana efficient than us like it's just going to be too hard to hit a ley line binding this hand's fine keep i'm actually going to probably start off with mutavault um yeah, I'm going to start off with Muta Vault with the plan of attacking with it. Um, if they play a creature, turn one, I'll probably kill it with Dismember. Which in that case, I like didn't lose anything. There might be something to say about like playing Island, Vile. Um, so that... Because like, if I go Island, attack with Muta Vault with Aether Vile on one, they, they're incentivized, highly incentivized too. Go for a leyline binding on my ether vial, and I'm some just sort of behind on things to do. But I think we're gonna curve out fine anyway. Turn one is delicate. It's complicated. If opponent goes like fetch line pass, I will not attack with my muta vault because I don't want it to get bolted. Raghavan. Raghavan is going to perish. Given how many car how few cards we have in our hand, I don't intend on playing subtlety for the um evoke cost. I'm just gonna do my best to like play Cavernous Souls, hopefully top deck another island or Cavernous Souls. Uh, name elemental, and then we'll just get that going. Uh, Territorial Kavu can resolve. Uh, we'll play Svelun, hope it resolves. That's... <sighs> Drawing the Aetherbot when I need to draw land. Yeah, I really love it. Deck, love it. And pass. Now, if our opponent's short on lands, then the Svelun actually just gets really strong. Because Tribal Flames can only deal four. And then I can just vial in Lord of Atlantis. And they still can only Tribal Flames for four. They can also Leyline Bind if they want to. Draw, then discard. Discard Wild the Cattle. Sort of show strength. Oh, how annoying. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. What do they do for a green? They dumped their in a cattle for this. What can you do with a green? Stern scolding? Holding a blue for stern scolding, maybe? I'm going to take our Vile up to three so that we have some chance in hell of getting our Subtlety online. If I draw two drop, whatever, I'll just play it. Oh, okay, so... Weird. Very weird. I think what's going to end up happening is I'm going to play Cavern Souls on Elemental with my Muta Vault up and hope that does not look strange to my opponent. Hopefully that... 
That's not suspicious at all, now is it? Not suspicious at all. <laughs> it's also possible maybe my opponent is playing like um uh what's it called? Like a uh, a handful of removal or something. I wonder if they're just gonna pass here. Oh no, they attack right into it. So like yeah, if I have Tishana's tie binder here, that'd be great. I don't though. Discard a land this time. Oh, maybe they have two tribal flames. That's possible. Uh, looks like tribal flames is coming. Tribal flames will only put me down to two, though. No, this is not terrible. I will just play subtlety, um, just flashing it in, and if we top deck a lord, we win. Uh, this is the Merfolk one. It's the elemental one. Because I am attacking for eight here. And one lord wins the game. As far as I know, they have no interaction for this. I don't know what they can have in green that would do anything here. Does it have trample? Trying to have equal whenever it attacks, choose one. But it can't be it can be chump blocked. Make it easy. We just rip Hexcatcher off the top. Hexcatcher, Lord of Atlantis, Master of the Pearl Trident. Uh, what else would save us here? I probably need it too. Uh, they probably just have another Tribal Flames and I'm dead. Or even Lightning Bolt. I think I'm going to tick this up to four. So if I draw Subtlety... Um, I have the best chance. I think I think that's just the best use. Of like, there's two cards I thinking I'm thinking about subtlety and like with the vial on three. The only things I can play are Svelun and subtlety. That's it. But if I draw Svelun, I can't win the game this turn. So I might as well just tap. I might as well just cat, tap my mana and then hold a Mutavolt up and um or Mutavolt up to give my Svelun indestructible. So we'll put this to three. I'm oh, sorry, we'll put this to four just in case I draw subtlety. I, I'm very likely dead, though, if I don't draw Lord. Uh, is this red mana? So yeah, so if I draw Tide Shaper, that doesn't do it. They have to have a hand of gas. I mean, <laughs> they dumped a wild the cattle earlier. They dumped the cattle. That was a perfect. They could play that on the same turn. Unless that was a misclick. That was such a sign of strength. That was so weird. They like attack, dump into cattle, leave green mana up. It had to have been a mistake. Yeah, I have no idea what that play was. Unless they have stern scolding. And they ha they were hoping to hold up the blue. And then we played cavernous souls and ruin their day. Unwalk Ward, Island Walk, or even Hexcatcher. God damn it. Attack. Maybe we only attack with Lord of Atlantis so that if they have Raghavan to dash in, uh, I can block with Subtlety and Svelun. That seems like a plan. I'm attacking for lethal next turn anyway. Probably. If <laughs> I'm attacking for lethal next turn, if my opponent doesn't have squat. <laughs> Actually, good question. If I attack, put my opponent down to eight. Do I have lethal if they even play sign of Draco? Uh, maybe not. Because if they put up a blocker, that's a problem. Yeah, I'm passing priority. I'm waiting for priority back. I think my opponent's double queuing. 
So what happens is um, if I only attack with the Lord of Lance, put my opponent down to eight, down to eight I play Svelun. They play Sign of Draco. Like, I still can't attack for the win that next turn because I'm only attacking for six. Do I need to badly play around a Raghavan? How does the game play out? You played this turn three, played that turn four. You could have another Raghavan in hand. That's possible. I mean, I don't think it matters too much. If you have a Scion, I bet you don't even fetch this. I bet you fetch basic, play Scion. Okay, so I'm just going to bank that there's no flyer. The, the way the game is played out, it's possible the opponent has a Raghavan. But it's not particularly possible if they have Scion. Game's not really playing out that makes that sound makes sense. Fetching the Triumph to get one extra damage, deal one more damage with Tribal Flames doesn't really matter because my opponent could still Tribal Flames for four. I'd be at four, and then if they have another Tribal Flames, I'm dead anyway. My opponent might be like, come on, come on, get let's if I'm dead, let's just get this game over with, please. My I have 19 minutes on my clock. Truth be told, I I'm you know I'm thinking, so they're probably they're like, okay, well if Nikachu's thinking, I'll go to my other game. Attack for two, put my opponent down to something. Yeah. This game was fine. If we lose the match, it was mostly because of game one. Game one, no one drop versus their hand. Not looking good, not looking good. I'll tap the mute of all to make it inconspicuous that it's even an interaction. Maybe with my Vial on 4, they're going to think that I have, like, another subtlety, maybe? <laughs> I do have one uh, random card in hand. Maybe they have nothing. That'd be nice. Okay, they're attacking. It's a bit of a free roll. They dump a Ley Line. I shall block uh, with this, because I have to. Oh, is that going to blow me out? Can I block with subtlety instead? And attack with everything? So the problem is if I block with Svelone, or I should double block to make sure this thing dies. That actually makes a lot of sense. And then I'm going to activate Mutavault to protect my Svelone. I don't know what removal they have. Doesn't look like they have Tribal Flames. Or else I would be dead by now. Oh, they're going to guarantee that this thing dies. Okay, what are you going to remove here? They're going after my Svelune. Okay, sure. That's interesting. I had the option to just block with Svelune. Oh, but if, the problem is, if I blocked with Svelune, activate Mutavault, they ley line bind the Lord, and I'm still screwed. Man, it'd be nice to have another subtlety here. Okay, what do I want? Trickster would be good. Trickster is not bad. <laughs> Actually, tr Trickster just kills this thing. Trickster is great. Really attack for five, put my opponent down to three. Again, the breeding pull up. This breeding pool hasn't done anything all game. <laughs> it helped support cast the territorial cavu on turn two. 
and has been left up every single turn. Is there like a particular spell? Like what is going on here? Okay, this is always yield, always no. I never want to go above four. Uh, well, this is not looking good for uh, me. Did we flood out one, two, three, four, five versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah. We drew. This attack probably isn't very good because I have to chump block this. Then there's going to be a Gigantha coming down. I needed to. I need to actually uh, kill the territorial territorial Kavu because I'm only chump blocking at this point. This is like an attack. Oh, you got, did you have really have stubborn denial the entire game? Is that what it was for? To prevent me from playing Dismember? Oh, it had to have been. It just had to have been. They haven't played a creature yet. It'll be funny for them because if they play Gigantha and I have subtlety, I uh, can only attack back for five. I guess that's fine. No, but the correct thing to do here is just double block. Um, and then when Gigantha comes down, I need to pray I top deck something useful. Basically like Trickster into Trickster into something. Come on, pony, kill me already. Come on. It's good to play against this deck. Uh, so I get some more play testing in regards to like how well I match up versus it. Uh, I learned absolutely nothing from this match. <laughs> I was on the draw with no one drop. Oh, they had. The hell, I wonder how long they had that trouble flames for. Okay, whatever. Okay, we concede. Uh, game one, we had a one drop. We had like no one drop. Game two, uh, our hand, our hands were like fine. Sweden so came out of sort of a clunky time. It's not exactly the card that we we're looking for. Uh, it, it was it was okay. Fortunately, we didn't have any good way of de dealing with a territor territorial cavu. Actually, no, hun. we had we were in a winning situation. We needed to top deck a lord for one turn. Oh, and we drew like definitely one too many mana sources in a hand that had subtlety. That was too bad. But that being said, I still think we have game versus this deck. Uh, I don't feel like I'm getting run over or anything like that, even though we r ran poor. So let's move on to round five. Round five, we won the die roll. We have a hand with spells and an ether vial. I keep. This probably might be a game where uh, we'll, we might pitch a subtlety. If we pitch a subtlety, it'll probably be our three drop. So we don't get, like, it depends on like what, what happens. Let's see if we draw a land in the f next few turns. If we peel even one land, then maybe we do not pitch subtlety. We'll just go either vial to two, to three, to four. Get maximum value out of that thing. But if we're choked on mana, we're only claw, and we can only play one card per turn. We're gonna make sure our opponent only plays one card per turn. A crab. In that case, I will dismember that damn thing as soon as possible. Hmm, another land, but uh, getting rid of this thing is just so important. I'm not even going to waste my time. There's a second crab. I'll probably let her... Mm, do I let her resolve? Probably. I, I have Tishana's Tidebinder for it. On some turn in the future. Some turn, someday, somewhere. I 
wonder, is this mono blue? Most mill decks are blue black, some are Azorius. Where's all this mill coming from? What's going on here? We have a pretty good clock. Another damn crab. Um, hmm, a little concerning. But I think I need all my lords. I'm just going to have to try to Tishana's Tidebinder one of these things. The only way I usually lose to a mill is via the crabs. One crab I can deal with. Two, I honestly can't. Not very well, at least. Uh, Spaloon got dumped. Force Negations got dumped. A Dismember got dumped. Usually two can race me. There's a black source, so they're going to kill off Lord of Atlantis. Oh, fatal push. Do you have 20 or fewer cards in my deck? Sure. No way! I and I have so many of these in my hand. They should wait until I activate this. They would have blown me out super hard. The good news is they have one card left in hand. Why didn't they l wait for more cards to go in the graveyard? What's the point of surgical extracting on the stack? I don't understand that. Okay, so they know exactly what's in my hand. Um, don't know if that's going to benefit me or not. Oh, we draw a lord. That's lucky. This is awkward. I have no burrow here, but unfortunately I can't trigger the damn thing. Or I can't activate it, return it to my hand, so the Field of Ruin can eat it pretty freely. So we're just going to counter one of these activations. You have another Fatal Push? What's going on here? Oh yeah, you want to activate your Field of Ruin. I will look for a land um, only because I could, if I top deck, um, if I top deck a two drop, I want to be able to play them. This game's not going to last for much longer for the most part. I counter one of those triggers, one crab offline, and I'll take the vial up to four. Oh, that's great. Ancestral Recall. But they're a little bit constrained on mana, so maybe that's not too bad. Attack for many. We'll upkeep Trickster the other one. To prevent any landfall triggers for the turn. How many subtleties are left in the deck? I think there's many, which is good. Yeah, I think two subtleties are left in the deck. That's important if my opponent plays Tashana's Tide. Uh, sorry, um, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, because I need to exile like 40 mana value worth of cards, and at least subtlety will be part of that. They'll eat up eight. All right, we won. Too many creatures. Okay, Let's 
Uh, counter spells! As many counter spells as I can get. Uh, I can't remember if I like Trickster in this matchup or not. Definitely counter spells. Dismembers. Dismembers. Can't remember. Some subtleties are fine. What did we do earlier? I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I shaved. Oh, maybe just the Tricksters? No, I got rid of Tishana's Tidebinder, I think. Or did I? What did I do here? I don't even remember. No, I kept the Tishanas because I want to get around um, Extinction Event. And it interacts with the crabs. Maybe it's just the Tricksters I don't need. Maybe I brought in one more. I can't remember what I did. You guys can look. Whatever I did in the, the, in the round that I won, do that again. Okay, we'll have 64 cards. 60, I like having 63 to 64 cards post-board versus mill. I don't think it hurts my mana base or anything. They're like partially a control deck anyway, so having extra threat density is convenient. This hand's fine. We'll keep. Maybe subtlety is worse. Maybe subtlety is just worse than Trickster, even though it like helps Hedge versus Tishana's Tidebinder. Uh, we will keep this. How many Demir decks did we play against today? A Ruin Crab. I'm pretty sure we're going to start the party off with a Dismember. Only draws one card, sure. <laughs> okay, that's a sign of desperation. Are they like ooh, mana screwed? Another crab. It's just well, the problem with using subtlety on it is it's not really effective. Like this game is going to go on for pretty long. I think I would rather, like, I think I would rather force negate something, pitching subtlety. So I guess we'll let it resolve. Did they draw this? Like, I'm trying to construct, like, what's going on in their hand. Uh, I'm going to play our Aether Vial. This game's going to go on for a little while. Oh, no. All right, I'm gonna mill three a turn, no matter what. Yeah, we will force that, and we'll pitch subtlety. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. Cancel. Backspace. <laughs> I'm like, I have nothing to do. Oh, no, wait, I do have something to do. I was about to pass through my turn. Oh, I'm going to play Lord of Atlantis. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. This is another Tasha. Lord of Atlantis is dead. Yeah, our borrow is returned. You may replay it. Mill me three cards. Well, this hand's getting a little clunky. <laughs> oh, I need one more land here. One more land will be it would be so gas. Each opponent mills four, mill four cards. That's fine. Well, fortunately, they've got like like they're not like putting the pedal to the metal or anything. 
If I draw one blue source, that'd be great. Because then I could like hard cast my force and negations and I have to two for one myself. Ah, uh, 20 cards. Twenty cards. Sorry, not twenty cards. Mana value of twenty. Cancel. What's what's in here so far? No, we can't enable things like uh, what's it called? I can't enable visions of beyond and other cards like that. So we're gonna stay at seventeen cards at the moment. At least I don't want to enable them yet. I have a lord. All right, I'm at 20. 20 cards in graveyard. Sure. I didn't realize I should have um, hit this crab with my Tishana's Tide Binder. Uh, I guess it didn't. It worked out because they killed the Master of the Pearl Trident. Uh, I'll play Svelun first. Sure. Again, I'll get a land here because I don't have a second land. But like, if I have like say three or more lands, there's like no point getting a land. You should just leave it in your deck. Ah, oh, you're gonna get the swamp, are you? Does that mean you have another a third fatal push? Oh, archive trap, sure. No response. Here, I'm gonna help you. Okay, I'm gonna help you. Got a spay loon here. <laughs> Let's work together to get all the cards out of my deck. Let's work together. Together, my deck will have nothing. Ooh, Hexcatcher. That's beautiful. Okay, let's draw a card. Oh, yeah, I got a Manamo. Which is not particularly useful. Okay, uh, whoops, cancel that. So get our Hexcatcher in play to maximize damage. Mm, just in case, I'm gonna sandbag the these cards. Yeah, I don't know why I'm keeping subtlety in the deck for a uh, trickster is like infinitely more useful. Infinitely more useful. Okay, we'll turn the stupid thing off. spell I still get to counter this thing at least I guess this is drown a lock trigger they are indeed on the removal plan uh, yeah Can I flash anything for play for three mana? Not really. Okay, just attack with the clowns. These are not useful cards. Sort of hoping to draw at least like one useful, like one piece of gas per turn, ideally. So what's going on here? Um, what does Archive Trap cost? Cost five? Well, I can counter that. I 
They didn't even block with their hex, uh, the, my hex catcher. Fine by me. Ten cards. Oh, man. What's even left for me to draw here? I need to draw, like, Lord into... L no, I need Tishana's Tidebinder into Lord. Okay, well, it looks like... Okay, what was my last card? Just out of curiosity. I'm just curious what the last card was going to be. I would have been dead if I had 60 cards left in my deck. I would have been dead at this spot. Oh, that card's great. But it's ultimately useless. <laughs> He had like that last, I don't know, a million turns ago. Uh, okay, let's bring the tricksters in. Um, I shouldn't even look at my own cyborg guy. Why would I keep subtlety in? You know, the, the protection from Tish Tasha's hideous laughter, not that necessary. Let's just submit that. This hand's like, okay... The problem is, the problem with these, like, one blue hands is that if you don't draw another land, you could just end up being completely lost. I don't even have a turn one play. I'm going to mulligan this. If, if like, I don't know, Svelun was a dock hand, I'd probably keep it, but I'm going to mulligan. Uh, this hand's a hell lot better. I will keep and this even this is a decision. I guess I'll bottom a cavern of souls, start off with Muta Vault and start attacking. Alternatively I could bottom Muta Vault. No, I don't want to do that. I will draw lands. See, this would have been subtlety, and it would have been useless. It's a crab. Oh, that's not bad. Anything that cur lets me curve out, I think, is quite good. Playing a fetch line there is uh, gives me some relief because they don't have a second crab, at least not yet. Sure. Mill 10. What do we got here? Any Lord of Atlantises, Master of the Pearl Trident, no Lords, so Surgical Extraction, not very good here. I'm sort of just going to be trying to Goldfish to victory. Uh, I'll take one turn off, though, to uh, uh, play Trickster. So like if they go, for example, Field of Ruin this turn, um, eat up my Muta Vault, they don't get six cards out of it. There it is. And 
I will definitely get an island. I'm gonna get trapped. I am trapped. 26 cards left. Oh, I drew Dismember. Uh, okay, so maybe change of plans. Um, I could pass the turn, tap down Swamp with Dock Hand, dismember the crab, attack for just two. Okay, hold on. I attack for two, play Lord end of turn, dump two more lords. Does that win? This would be four. Uh, sorry, this would be five, nine, twelve. Yeah, that would that would definitely be lethal. Okay, we're going to take that line. I don't want my opponent to play like Damnation, Extinction Event, or some nonsense. Okay, we're going to kill this crab off. And I'll tap down their black source. I don't think this one mana mana matters as much as um was this gonna be crypt incursion? Okay, well it's gonna be a lot of life. But I do have a lot of damage. It's twenty or less. Might still hold that. I <laughs> still might hold Dock Hand. Uh, is there a Lord of Atlantis? There's nothing in the graveyard now. Oh, Hexcatcher. Thank God. Where were you a million years ago? Okay, how much damage can I deal here? Okay, let's say I dump my hand. Or I dump Lord of Atlantis Hexcatcher. I can end up dealing um, 9, 13. Ugh, it's not a lot, actually. Um, yeah, double check the sweepers that Mill usually plays. They also play Ensnaring Bridge, which is terrible for me. It's terrible. It all depends on the the type of deck that they want to play. It all depends on the type of deck. This seems to be heavier on the milling than on the removal spells. Well, I have to deal a ton of damage, though. So let's just do that. Okay, hold on. Attack for 10. I just okay. Let, let's let's do the math. If I attack for um, five nine thirteen, the following turn I'm attacking for with this Lord in play six. These are all fives, right? So this is like five uh five ten sixteen. 16, uh, this will have to, uh, 21, it's still not lethal. So I can hold them back. I can hold my hex catcher back. Like I can hold back some information. I don't want to reveal that I have hex catcher yet. Cause it doesn't look like it's going to change much. I don't want, I like, I don't want to put hex catcher on the battlefield and they just kill it with like a fatal push or something. You know what I mean? I'm trying to avoid that. Oh, you know what's a line I didn't think of? Actually hitting the Shell Dock Isle with this. So they can't use it. Well, but I, I, I still need to get like a clock going. Clock is important. Okay, 
I get to play this, which looks like I can counter it with a hex catcher. Yeah, I most definitely will. See, they wouldn't have gone for this line if they knew I had hex catcher in play. And I guess we will get rid of Dock Hand because it is technically the weakest creature in play. Does that matter? It's sort of useful. And we'll hoof our opponent for as much as we can. Uh, I'll take this thing up to three, just in case we draw. Actually, no, I'll just keep it on two. Ugh. I, I, I just didn't know how I can use this, is the problem. Like, if I if I were to draw a Tishana's Tidebinder, it's, like, mostly just for the crabs. I guess I can hit, like, a Field of Ruin or something. Okay, this should be a two-turn clock, though. I'm attacking for five to... Ugh, I'm actually one short. As weird as that is. I'm only attacking for 5, 10, 21, 25. Unbelievable. Snaring bridge. Okay, we'll have to counter that. That's fine. We can do this. We can afford to counter some stuff, especially since our clock is not two turns anyway. Uh, I guess I'll sacrifice um, this lord. So now we have still not a two, two turn clock. Oh, now I draw the land. Um, okay, attack. Attack for now 11. So it's going to be 11 into, okay, it will be a lethal. It'll be a two-turn clock. So depending on what they play, I might just let it resolve. I can't let an ensnaring bridge resolve, but uh, I can let that resolve. So I can interact with that. Okay, I have lethal on the battlefield. Sort of have to hope my opponent does not have uh, removal. <laughs> removal will kill me. Was this extinction event? Or E on a million? Okay, what can possibly happen here? Until your next turn, up to one target creature gets minus three, minus zero. So let's say this gets minus three. I'm attacking for 11. Um, this is gonna be 11 and 14. Wow, I'm one short. Okay, what's the other option? Uh, target player mills uh, three times X cards. Oh, they could just mill me to death. So, so, are we just sacking the hex catcher? No, wait a minute. They can't. No, they can't. They can't mill me to death. Um, because then they die. So they have to shrink something. Which then I can kill it and then threaten to attack them back next turn. There's like no point for me sacrificing anything. So this, hold on, what's the last one? Target player mills three cards. Then if a graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, you draw three cards. Otherwise you draw a card. Uh, so you get to draw a card off of this line. But then you die. Okay, so it resolves. I did the math. You can do anything. You gotta do something. A 
to one target creature gets minus three minus zero. That's fine. So I can actually one shot this with Tishana's Tie Binder. Like I didn't want to sack anything. It seemed pointless. Do I still win if I draw a Lord? Not sure. Ooh, drew force negation. All right, that's got to be a lock. This game's got to be locked now. I have no idea if I can get my opponent out of this. I mean, with enough removal spells, I guess it's possible. It's just so unlikely. <laughs> Jace number two? Doesn't Jace number two still do nothing? Oh, no, but they have a land drop this turn. No, they don't have a land drop. So what does Jace number two even accomplish? Let's say they have Fatal. They probably don't have Fatal Push. Let's say they have Fatal Push, though. Because if they had Fatal Push, they'd kill the Hex Catcher first. And then go for this entire line. Ah, it's screwed. Let's just counter the stupid thing. I don't even I don't even want to know what's gonna happen out of all this. Okay, and we won. Well, we won 4-1 against mostly meta decks. Like, mostly meta decks. We only lost to Zoo, which is the big baddie on the block. And I don't... Like, so my impression is, like, I'm going to have... Like, I don't, I'm not going to have a bad matchup versus Zoo. I'm just going to have, like, maybe an even-ish matchup. I still think that they're, like, a, to some degree afraid of us. Because we can... They have, like, a pretty clunky game. And then uh, we have, like, a lot of good interaction. And, like, we could just crack back and kill them out of nowhere. Maybe uh, a card, if we really wanted... If we really wanted to put the screws to Zoo... Aether Gust should be Harbinger of the Tides. I don't know if that's particularly well positioned, though, overall in the metagame. Like, Harbinger sucks versus Yawgmoth, Goryeo's Vengeance, Tron, Amulet, Creativity, and like, uh, Aether Gust is just so much more flexible against everything else, so I would just keep it like this. All right, I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked everything. 4 1 with Mono Blue Merfolk. There's nothing wrong with this deck. Everyone, can, they can all play Simic. That's okay. They can go play Simic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Mono Blue. All right, Fish Fam. See you next time.